This question says, I've gained a lot of weight and struggle to get the energy to walk and do basic tasks. I admire you. How do you do it? Thank you. And thank you for this question. I think that there is so much stigma around weight changes and mobility changes that for most people, it's very, very common to just ignore it and pretend like it's not happening because they are such sensitive topics. Weight and mobility changes are both very common things to go through in life especially when you are like aging both things are very very common truth be told like if you live long enough you will become disabled so this is true the, lo the longer you live the more disabled you'll get as gradually as the aging process progresses like things start falling apart naturally anything if you use anything long enough it will eventually stop working sure but is that really a case or a scenario where somebody should just say like, I mean, I'm going to become disabled already, so I might as well expedite it as much as I possibly can. I might as well just eat as much as I fucking can and just make the, di the disability happen sooner because ultimately I'm going to be disabled anyway. I hate this. I hate this scenario. I hate this argument point because it literally you can use this on any anything in life. Like, for instance, I'll give you a really good example. Why? Why are you working to make money when you're never going to make enough money? Or let's even go further than that. Why should I do anything ever in my life? Because ultimately I'm going to die anyway. So I might as well just fucking not do anything. Just sit around and just sit on the floor, slop around on the floor and suck BBCs off until the end of time. No, because that's not how we do things. Okay. You have responsibilities, you have morals, you have things in play that make you do things okay and that's a good thing you should want to do stuff so this individual jordan saying like oh yeah you'll you know as you live the longer you live the more disabilities you get is true but it also doesn't matter because when you are young right now okay or even relatively young jordan even though a lot of people look at jordan and go this is an old woman right this woman probably has kids this probably this woman's probably like 42 no, I think Jordan's actually like 23, 24 or something like that, which is an anomaly. I couldn't even believe it when I heard that Jordan was that old, um, that young, sorry. This just kind of goes to show you that as you become fatter, your life um, and your ability to use your body becomes exponentially harder and harder and harder because you're literally inducing the effects, the negative effects of aging. Okay, there are some positive effects of aging. Becoming a dad, even a daddy in the sense of like not actually in the possession of having children yourself, but more so like the title of daddy. You know what I'm talking about, dude? You kind of have a little bit of a gut. Maybe you got a little bit of gray hair almost, right? You're in your 30, late 30s. Maybe you're in your 40s. These guys are hot. Not me saying that. This is just what the overall consensus of what society believes in right now. Older men are attractive, all right? You know it. I know it. I remember literally talking to a girl one time. And she was probably three years younger than me. And she was like, so how old are you? And I was like, oh, I don't know how old I was at the time, dude. I was probably, I think I was like 25 or something. And then she was like, so how old are you? And I was like, oh, I'm 25. And she's like, oh, um, damn, I don't think this is going to work. And I was like, why? She was like, I just kind of like dating guys that are just older than me by like a lot. Like if you don't 10 years, 10 years is like the minimum for me. And I was just thinking, you read my profile, right? Like, did you think that I was like lying? Did you think that I was like, you know, oh yeah, I put myself down as 25, but I'm actually 35. Did you think that? Like, is that what you thought? No, that's not how that works. And by the way, if you assume that I was 35 when I, when I was 25, that's offensive. Okay. My skincare wasn't as good as it is now, but even still, like, I don't think I looked 35 when I was 25. It doesn't matter. The point I'm making is just because eventually things will become bad doesn't mean you should automatically induce those traumas upon yourself for no other no other reason than food, which is not a good reason. And by the way, if you want to get rid of the effects of gaining weight, don't gain weight or get rid of the weight that you gained. That is the fastest and easiest way. I'm sick of these people literally going into these like, oh, this is what you can do in order to make your life better as an overweight person. Buy seatbelt extenders. Buy a toilet bowl thing that you can, like, flush. Like, you ever see those, you know, like, you have to flush the toilets. It takes a lot of effort, apparently, for these people to get off the, the, the toilet. But they have, like, sticks that you can attach to your toilet bowl that you could push down yourself. They can't wipe, so they have to invest in bidets, which I've been told is actually a good thing. I don't know. I just don't like anything in general touching my butthole. And then they have to invest in all this other stuff and go, this is what you should do if you're a fat person. And I always go... Why are you doing that when you could just lose the weight and not have to deal with any of those problems? And I know it's not as easy as just lose the weight, but it's got to be a lot easier than going through Amazon wish lists and finding out all the accessibility devices that you honestly don't even need if you weren't even the weight that you are 
in general. But anyway, go off, Jordan. So, like, I, I don't know why Jordan does this as well. Like, this is her thing. Like, anyway, yeah. And then she also, I want to give her a uh, high five for the star patch. I am in possession of star patches as well. And if you need to use them and you have a bad pimple one day, use them. Use it. Use it. Okay? Nothing wrong with it. I'll give her one up for that. And also, that doesn't mean that these aren't very difficult things to go through. Before I was diagnosed with lipedema, I gained like 150 pounds in a very short period of time. And you know what's very interesting, though, is that Jordan says this, right? I gained 150 pounds in a short period of time. So many times I've heard these people literally say these words of, no, I decline to be weighed because the process of being weighed is very dehumanizing to me. It's super, uh, it, it, it makes me triggered and I don't like it. It hurts me mentally. And then I always think, so you acknowledge, right, that you gained 150 pounds in a short period of time, which in, in any scenario is very, very concerning. If you gain weight, if you gain 150 pounds in a short period of time or you lose 150 pounds in a short period of time, which would be like a couple months, that is concerning on both ends, okay? This is one of the reasons why I always say, getting weighed is super, super ridiculously important. For some reason, a lot of these fat activists literally think that it's like, there's no benefit to it. Like, oh, getting weighed is not gonna tell you anything. Why are you weighing me? You should never weigh me. It has nothing to do with anything. So no, yeah, obvious fucking Lee, there's gonna be some drastic changes in your 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 lifestyle if you gain that much weight that quickly. But anyway. Dima, I gained like 150 pounds in a very short period of time. And also in that time period lost like, I would say like 95% of Terrible. my mobility. Like I literally could not stand for more than like five seconds. You know what I think is really interesting about Jordan is that she will sit there and she will say to the end of earth that she is disabled because of her lipedema, which I agree with. She is disabled because she has lipedema. Fine. I get it. I'm not taking that away from you. I think that's fine. It's justified for you to have lipedema. I wish that obviously you didn't have it. I think Jordan should live a very amazing, fantastic, beautiful life. But here's the thing. Is this a case to not lose weight? Because now you have this chronic illness that you can't get rid of, that you're going to have to deal with for the rest of your life, which a lot of people would contribute to being obese to begin with. I don't see a lot of thin people getting lipedema, but I do see a very large amount of people, no pun intended, that get lipedema from be from, and they're also overweight. So I think, right, even though Jordan does have this condition and she's suffering from this condition, I think weight loss can obviously be super beneficial for somebody like Jordan, but they'll never see it that way. Jordan literally has said multiple times, like there's no point of losing weight because I'm gonna be chronically ill regardless, so why should I lose weight? Which is a very dumb fucking terrible stance because it's like somebody saying, well, you know, even though my, my front headlights don't work, then I, you know, I just never, never should repair my car at all. You know, even though I could repair my car and I can get the engine fixed and I can get the, you know, the catalyst converter checked out and I can get all these new appendages and things put in that will make my car more drivable. But the only problem is like the front lights won't work. Fuck it. I'm just never going to work on my car ever again. It's a terrible way of thinking about stuff. You could still lose weight. That doesn't mean that you can't lose weight. Throughout that entire time that I was gaining weight, that was something that was actually very concerning for me, which I think is a big mi misconception about my experience going through that period of time in my life. Any sort of rapid and like unexplained weight change, I think should be alarming to you. So what I mean by that is that like there was not for me a behavioral change that caused this rapid weight gain and explained what was happening to my body. At this point now we do understand what happened and it's actually very clear that I was put on a diuretic and that flared up the lipedema which triggered this whole thing in my body that caused that all to happen. Why were you going on a diuretic man? That's so interesting. I would love to hear the backstory on why you were prescribe the diuretic or maybe you weren't prescribed the diuretic there's a bunch of guys that just go on these particular medications to lose weight very quickly or to drain out the water very quickly maybe they got a show maybe they just got a meat weight or something like that it's very common actually but i would love to know what led up to that decision of taking this diuretic what is this on my hat right here some kind of like growth don't look at that Yes, I know my mustache has white stuff in it, okay? It's not semen. It's not man mustard. No, it's not, okay? It's wax. And when I do my mustache like this, it's very hard for me to look at this mustache and go, I know I'm going to fuck it up if I touch it again, so I'm just not going to touch it. And I'm just going to leave it like this. Yes, it's got white crusty stuff in it, but it's all organic crusty nut. Uh, cr no, not crusty nut, sorry. Um, it's wax, okay? It's very good wax, too, so it's going to stay like this all day, probably, till tomorrow, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. We'll see.
happen, which was also the cause of the decrease in my mobility. Thankfully, while I was going through that, I didn't really have any like energy changes as you referenced in your comment. Didn't you just say that you couldn't stand? Oh, well, maybe it was because the pain was so heavily, like the energy change maybe wasn't an issue. Sure, I'll give you that one. So for me, that time period in my life was really so much more about obviously pursuing diagnosis and trying to figure out what was going on with my body, but then also finding accessibility tools so that I could continue to live my life and like be okay with with the change in my body i think it's really fine and perfect and beautiful if you need accessibility devices especially if you're somebody that's disabled i think it's great i think that it's awesome that we've reached a point in society where these things are even things that we have in general like for for the longest time it was like oh you don't have a leg well i guess that's it dude like you're dead that's just how it is oh yep yeah. Philip has diarrhea. Well, he's dying tomorrow because diarrhea was like a death sentence, a death sentence for like a lot of people for a long fucking time, right? Or something as simple as like, oh, did you see that Margaret had a leech on her neck like two days ago? She's dead. She died three days. She wasn't even. I don't even know where she got the leech on her. I have no idea how that happened. But simple things like that were death sentences. Or even having something like, oh yeah, um, Philip doesn't have 20/20 vision. He just died. That's just what happened. Like, they would just, I don't know, they think that, or if you were a really pretty person, like a really pretty girl, they would just sacrifice you to yield better crop for the gods, you know, to appease the gods. Can you imagine being a god and be like, I bestow upon you this amazingly beautiful creature. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's so amazing. And then you, you turn around to look at something else like, hey, is that burrito done? And you look back and then she's just dead. And you're like, damn, they really killed her. Um, to get more corn. Damn. That's, that's something different, dude. Fuck! You guys keep fucking up, you know? And you guys eat ass, which in a way is beautiful, right? Isn't that beautiful to eat ass? Uh, not man ass, though. Don't ever eat man ass. That's, that's something different. Unless, unless it's a gay man. If you eat a gay man's ass, it's probably okay. Because gay men shave their butt cheeks. And they also shave the interiors of their... It's like, okay, listen, okay? If me and you, hypothetically speaking... We're in a bed or somewhere else where I was laying down on my back and I had taken my knees, right? I had put them behind my, my ears, right? And I was fully spread eagle. Like my shit was open, right? Nutsack to the side or whatever. Um, meat obviously over my shoulder and my butt cheeks was out. Just pure butthole. And your face was like right th like this. Like you were looking at it. You would have to use all your strength not to throw up because... I don't properly clean myself, okay? Obviously, I wash my butthole and things like that, but I don't shave. Like, I don't... I got baby wipe, obviously. But the point I'm making is, like, man butthole is obviously not going to be as delectable as a woman's butthole or even a gay man's butthole because gay dudes properly take care of themselves, right? Men are notorious for not having standards when it comes to cleanliness. I knew dudes that would wear underwear for like four days in a row. And now granted, it's not as bad as it is for women to do that because women have leaky orifice thingies and guys don't really have that. And guys can just shake, 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 shake it and they'll just pull up their pants and they'll just wear the same underwear for days at a time. I knew a dude that literally made a sticky deodorant last three years. This is like really common stuff. I know a guy that just refuses to wash his feet because he said in a, in a case and scenario where he doesn't have shoes, he wants to be able to walk on concrete or like things that are like very very uncomfortable to walk on and he'll be okay like building up tolerance or something like that but I think he's doing it in the wrong way but the point I'm making is men don't wash their buttholes why would you want to eat a man's butthole not not good don't ever do that don't think about doing it either it's probably very not delectable and I feel like you'd have to really eat a man's butthole that you don't care about because if you ate a dude's butthole like let's say for instance you were a woman and you ate a dude's butthole that was like your boyfriend or husband, I think the relationship is done after that. Because like, there's no other way you're gonna look at that. You're gonna look at that man from that point on and be like, you dirty dog, you disgusting, slimy person. I ate your butt cheeks last night. And now you're gonna just flame them every time you do. Anytime a conversation comes up and you feel like you're losing the conversation, she's gonna go, but I ate your ass. But I ate your ass. Yeah, try me, try me next time, yup. Try to tell me that I don't know how to make coffee? Try me. I ate your butt cheeks. And then it's at the family reunion. And everybody's going, oh my God. Oh my God. Harold, did that happen? And you're going, mom, it's 2024. Men have feelings too. I have my G spot in there. Or whatever. However you want to, you know, you can get your butt cheeks eaten if you want to. I, it's whatever you want to do, right? I wouldn't fucking do that shit. Fuck that. 
I'm not into that shit at all. Because I think for a lot of people, there's this like fighting of your experiences, especially when it comes to changes in mobility, because you don't want to lose your mobility. Of course, nobody wants to lose their mobility. There's a few people like there was that one guy that like cut off his legs because he didn't like them. Or that one person that made themselves blind by like spraying themselves with bleach in their eyes because they were like, I'm a blind person. And the guy was like, dude, you're not. What are you talking about? You're not blind. You're literally seeing me right now. And he's like, fuck, he's right. And then he just went in the kitchen. He's like, tss, tss, tss. or that guy. Um, there was like a dude over there in Russia that beat off like 59 times in a, a day and then died. I don't know how he died exactly, dude. I, I'm going to let you know right now. If you beat off more than three times, probably four times, what happens at the end of it, right? Because like usually when you bust, it's like, right? But then after like the second or third time that day, it just kind of, you know, it leans out a little bit. After that fourth or fifth time, I feel like once you hit that pinnacle, you're going to hear like a <laughs> I've heard stories about that guy. I heard that he has women outside of his house where he used to live just perpetually beating off in honor of his name and what he was able to accomplish. I mean, truly a man of exquisite taste, but he did die ultimately. Um, but at least he died doing what he loved the most, right? He did it for the sport. He proved a point and he won. I mean, he lost, but he still won. I don't know. I don't even know what we're talking about right now. And so with that, there is this sort of denial that happens that means that you're not going to use accessibility devices. You're not going to get a mobility aid. You're not going to do these things that oftentimes when I see like, listen, I get it, Jordan. I'm going to keep prefacing this. Okay. Cause I know there's going to be people out there going, Jordan has lipedema. I get it. Okay. Jordan has lipedema. I'm not taking that away from her. Okay. But oftentimes I see when fat people are in these positions where they have these chronic illnesses and things such and so forth, a lot of these illnesses and a lot of these problems that I feel like these fat people are facing sure could be attributed to illnesses or um, other problems due to chronic illnesses. But a lot of these things could be alleviated with something as simple as a calorie deficit. Calories in, calories out. And I don't know what fairy tale world you're living in where you're not looking out, looking at that as an optimal outcome. Given the situation of it's ultimately up to you to decide that you want to be the one that loses weight. You can continue to look for accessibility devices and things like that and live your life like that. I also think that you should be looking at ways to reduce the amount of pain, trauma, and other things of, that, that are negatively affecting you, things that you can change, right? Things that you have the ability to change. And I think, given the situation that Jordan is in, it's probably very possible for her to lose weight, and I think pretty optimal as well. Would very much so improve your day-to-day -day life while still trying to figure out what's going on. Which is why it's so important to me that we decrease the stigma around these things because with stigma and shame comes this, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, it's a cycle, right? There is a lack of acceptance around the mobility change. So then you're like, well, I don't wanna get a mobility aid because then that will mean that I am like this forever and then it's just cycles and cycles. And the reality is that like, you probably like a gay man not accepting that he's gay. You know what I'm talking about? Like that one time, he was at like a gangbang or whatever. And then every time he was like, yeah, I'm about to go in. I'm about to, I'm about to lay it down. And then you like, you come in and then you just see like a, a, a harem of BBCs. You know what I'm talking about? And you're like, Oh my God. Uh, ooh. And then you look at the girl and you're like, ooh, uh, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? It's probably like that, but you're like, you're not accepting it because all your friends are like really, really homophobic. And they're like, dude, gay guys are gay, dude. Dicks are gay. Fuck dicks. Dicks are ugly they're disgusting vagina all day self-lubrication but you're just like yeah 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 true true dog i love that i love vaginas i love the female orifice i love i want to impregnate so many women but really deep down in your heart you know that you want to impregnate a man's colon you know that's what you really want to do but you just can't tell people that because maybe if you did your homophobic friends like maybe you're friends with a lot of black guys i know a lot of people that think that oh you know Black guys are minority, so they should be, like, more accepting of other minorities. Bullshit! Have you ever been around black dudes? Listen, now obviously not all black dudes, right? But listen, dude. If you're around the black dudes that I've been around, dude, they are the most homophobic dudes I've ever met in my life. I've never met a, a group of people more homophobic than these black guys I know. And that's fine. I don't know. Maybe it's, like, a cultural thing or something like that. Obviously, it has nothing to do with them being black, I'm sure. Obviously. But still, dude. I met a lot of black guys that are like, damn, dude, sucking dick is gay. Fuck that shit. I ain't about it, dog. I know some guys that think it's even gay to even have a butthole. So you hear these things, right? And then I'm really accepting of gay dudes. Obviously, I'm not so accepting that I'm going to let one of them slide one in. But you know what I'm talking about. 
Um, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about right now, dude. Let's go back to what she's saying. Oh, yeah, it's probably like that. Yeah. You can use a mobility aid temporarily. Is she, like, outside the hood right now, dude? What is this, like a... Uh, is this, like, a projects complex, dude? What is she doing? There is no way to know it, in a lot of circumstances, right? In my circumstance, I didn't know if I was going to be permanently disabled. Like, mobility-wise, I am permanently disabled, but... You know, I, I think it's really important to also understand that even though you are permanently disabled and you have things about you that you cannot change, there are plenty of things about you that you can change that will make your cir circumstance better, especially if you've done none of them. You could do so much more to improve your lifestyle. I think with this radical acceptance piece, it actually allows you to like continue living a joyful life and like going outside, going to the gym, going and getting True. movement, going to the grocery Losing weight. You know, practicing calorie deficits, eating healthy, understanding weight loss is optimal. You know, you're talking about all these great things, but you're failing to talk about the thing that's going to ultimately make your life much more improved, which is weight loss. Like, it's great that you're doing joyful movement. In my opinion, joyful movement is fucking beaten off, right? I don't know what the fuck you're contributing to be joyful movement. I would never, like, it's fine to go to the gym and enjoy what you're doing there. But most of the time, if you're just going to the gym to do joyful movement, it's okay to do things at the gym that you don't want to do. I know most people don't even want to do legs, but you do them anyway because you know that you want to grow the butt cheeks or you want to grow your back or you want to grow the calves. There's a whole bunch of muscle groups that a lot of people don't want to work out, but you do it anyway because you know that it's going to help you later on, right? So but anyway. Grocery store, doing these things, getting your medication, like all getting of these just medication. like normal human things that we have to do because we are humans with bodies that require this like maintenance and also because like going outside is good for you True. like if you are in a place of denial with this mobility change i know people for whom like that has happened and they just literally did not leave the house for several years you mean like fat people i know i've seen a lot of fat people literally so incredibly obese that they've not left their room in literally decades at a time and that's incredibly sad and sure you can go into a scenario of somebody losing their legs or like somebody being disabled like i'm sure in plenty of scenarios people that are disabled are household bound or things such and so forth but i feel like i've seen way more scenarios of people being disabled via obesity that cannot physically leave their house because they're so massive that the idea of walking up or even downstairs is a far-fetched idea i mean i literally saw a video of a person walking downstairs at 600 pounds and they had to stop to take breaks walking downstairs gravity is on your side and you still need to take a break and that i think we can all agree is not great <laughs> and for those friends of mine like i do truly wish that we could like decrease the stigma around both like being a higher weight and also having mobility issues you know jordan speaks in a way that is very very favorable to fat people and i think that's so admirable that she has this still like this thought process in the back of her mind like i need to protect fat people i need to make sure that they understand that i'm coming from a place of kindness and things such and so forth you need to drop the nuke okay drop the fat man nuke it just say what you know you need to say represent dude stop beating around the fucking bush being fat is not good is not delectable in any way not favorable that's gonna help you okay just to say that straight up lose weight that's what you gotta say i don't know why this is such a hard thing for you to say out loud man i get it you're part of the fat acceptance community you don't want to demonize them but the demonization probably is going to help you out a lot. And it's probably going to help those people out a lot because now they know the truth. Because I, I guess a lot of people that actually watch Jordan will hear that information and go, huh, oh, uh huh, losing weight is probably better if Jordan's telling me to do it. But, you know, they can't say it because if they do, I guess they're, they're, they, they're going to be worried about. Sometimes you need to take the hit, you know, sometimes you need to take the hit and that hit is going to hurt but it's going to be better in the long run because if the longer you go saying is bullshit the harder it's going to be because the shame is what keeps people from seeking support both in the terms of like diagnosis and treatment and care medical care all this stuff and also just accessibility devices and tools and the things that you can use. oftentimes people that are very overweight or obese that are seeking out accessibility tools are looked down upon because most of the time when those people see people that are very overweight or obese that need these things they're contributing a lot of that stuff to the fact that they're obese and a lot of people most people would look upon that and go you could just lose weight and then you would not have to use these items now for my personal opinion on this i think that if you're obese or you need these accessibility tools i think awesome you should have them if you need them right i think that's a very very good thing to have 
Um, but I also hope that if you're in those positions where you're so fat, you need these accessibility tools, dude, if you can lose weight, lose weight, you, you know, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to be in a position where they have to use those things, right? You know what I'm talking about? In the same way that I hear this argument quite a bit where people go, oh, um, these women are just trying to get pregnant on purpose so they can get government assistance and live in low cost housing and things such and so forth. And they're just doing it to have kids and stuff like that. And I always think, um, that's crazy that you would think that people are purposefully having children just to get on government assistance so they don't have to do shit. That's crazy to me. And don't get me wrong. I'm sure there are people that do that, but most people are not doing that. That's such a crazy ass idea, dude. And I hate it when people talk in these general statements to make it seem like this is just normative. Like people are doing this all over the time. No, that's not the case. That's a crazy ass statement. Most people don't want to live in those particular places. And most people don't want to use accessibility devices, but they have to, you understand? Like a guy without legs wants to walk, but he has to use a wheelchair in the same way that if you're fat, and you have to use a wheelchair because you can't use your legs anymore, you should probably do as much as you can to make sure that you can use your legs again. You understand? In the same way that if you're very obese, you should lose weight so that way you're no longer obese and you don't have to use as many accessibility devices. Use right now, because treatment takes time, diagnosis takes time, but right now, today, you have a mobility limitation and using, accepting that and using accessibility tools can improve your entire life today so that you don't lose hope you don't stop trying to figure out how to get care how to get treatment how to get diagnosis all these things that is very takes a lot of energy interacting with the medical system i don't know where you're from but i live in the united states and so any sort of interaction with the medical system is going to be exhausting i think the people that say that the medical system here in the united states is exhausting probably have not been to other countries and not seen how their medical system works because it's not as like, oh, go to Canada and get free healthcare. It's going to be great, dude. Okay. It's not that simple. Okay. Here in America, definitely things are priced differently and different prices for different places and things such and so forth. But most of the time here in America, you can get like almost any procedure done and sure you'll have more procedures done depending on your healthcare and whatever the fuck. Like I know personally, like I remember recently my doctor was like, Hey, you should probably get a psychiatric evaluation because you might have ADD. And I was like, oh, okay, Um, where should I go? And he was like, all right, there's two places. I'm going to give you the phone number for all of them, and I'm going to give you a referral. So I was like, okay, no problem. So I went back home, and I called them up. And I was like, hey, my doctor told me to call you guys because he said that I might need this. And he said, okay, um, tell us who your insurance is so we can get this, like, going. And I was like, I have this insurance. And they're like, ooh, um, so we do take your insurance, but – they don't really cover the thing that you want to get done. So we can do some things, but we can't do all the things. And I was like, oh, okay, um, sure. And then I called up another place. And I was like, hey, can I get this done? And they were like, yeah, totally. We totally can. What's your insurance? I have this insurance. Ooh, yeah. I mean, we don't take that one. So I get it. I understand different insurance. Is, it's limiting and you have to go to certain places. And I get it. I understand. But you're going to have to deal with this across all spectrums, no matter where you go. Like if you go to Canada and you go, hey, dude, I have this like, lump that's like obviously it's not it's not hurting me in the sense of like it's it's just annoying it's something i want to get out i want to get taken out a doctor will go um yeah it's not like negatively affecting you it's not like bad for you in any way i get it's annoying but like we can't do anything about it because our health care is subsidized so anybody that needs surgery has to get the surgery that's needed rather than you know, wanting a surgery. That's why you see a lot of people that from Canada come down to the United States to get professional or like privatized surgeries because here in America, there is privatized surgery. You can get procedures done, which is a good thing and a bad thing, right? Anyway, I just wanted to touch on that really quickly. Um, I think it's too easy for these people to like, because oftentimes I feel like these people are totally anti-American and I think it's really, really sad. Um, I think that it's really sad that a lot of people contribute people on the, for instance, Trump supporters, right? They have taken the monopoly on the American flag, right? Now, it almost kind of seems like if you support America, a lot of people just contribute, say, oh, you support America, therefore you must support Donald Trump. That's not how that works. We should never, okay, if you're on the left or the right, you should never, ever, ever, ever let one side or the other have a monopoly on that shit. It almost kind of seems like if you're a Democrat, you're un-American. That's Fucked. You should be American regardless. The one thing that holds us all together, dude, don't let people on the right or whoever else dictate 
um, how you can love your country. That's ridiculous, okay? We're all American at the end of the day, unless you're not American and you're from like the UK. In that case, you eat weird food and you're eating peas out of cans, okay? What is that brown slop you're putting on bread? Anyway. Any sort of interaction with the medical system is going to be exhausting. And you don't have to make that harder for yourself by denying yourself the accessibility tools that will make your life easier. True. That was a very long video. I'm going to make another video where I talk about- it's okay, Jordan. It was a long video, but I enjoy Jordan's presence. I think that, man, I would love to have a, to a conversation with Jordan, but it seems like she would never want to have a conversation with me given the fact that I am, I don't know, um, abusive in, in the way that I speak, I guess, or maybe I'm like mildly offensive, I suppose. It doesn't matter. I think Jordan's great either way, and I think you're beautiful as well. Let's get on to the posts. If you're skinny and my friend, you get a pass, but, I hate skinny people. Fuck. This is like something this is like somebody saying, like, listen, if you're black and you're my friend, you're good. But if you are not my friend, then I hate black people. They're disgusting. All they do is wear cocoa butter. That's it's just gross. And I'm sick of BBC fondulation nowadays, too. It's too overboard. That's like the same thing here. But let's see why this person hates skinny people. Okay. Hashtag delete later skater. Um, imagine finding clothes that fit. Imagine finding clothes that are affordable. Imagine finding clothes that are actually, that actually look nice instead of something that just draped on. But like, <laughs> okay. I mean, sure. You can't find clothes. So you have to hate skinny people for that for some reason. That's, I mean, sure. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a skinny person's fault, but sure. I mean, anytime to... Find any time to like put your dump your responsibility on somebody else. Always good. So that's great. Hashtag I've decided I'm going girl mode for a little bit, but I but just because I can't afford to do anything else right now, which is its own bag of fucking worms I bought. What? I, I don't even understand that. What is girl mode? Uh, is that when you have like a period? Is that what it is? Like, is that like a menstrual cycle or something like that? Is that not what that is? Hashtag. Why is it? Why are these hashtags so incredibly long? Hashtag one top that so, one one top that looks good because I've been convinced that retail therapy is halfway decent and it felt nice until I looked at my bank account and remembered I'm not someone with consistent wage. What do you mean you're not somebody with a consistent wage, dude? I, you know what? Me being the person that I am, I go clothes shopping a grand total of maybe once a year. It's like my Christmas, okay? And I do it sometime in the summertime because it's nice and I don't like shopping in general. So I might as well make it as nice as humanly possible that I can to make it as comforting as for me as possible because it's very draining for me. And usually I have to go with a, a girl because girls know how to shop or whatever. And then I always have to get – they always go, you think that like I could get a bra? And I go – I don't know. I don't know anything about bras. Okay, well, like, look at these ones, and what do you think about this one? And what do you think about this, and what do you think about that? And I always go, yeah, that's fine, whatever, and I we leave because I eventually go, I don't even want to do this anymore because it's so traumatizing. Maybe I should just be gay, you know? Maybe I should just be gay. I feel like it would be way easier. Do guys even go shopping? Probably not. And I feel like if guys did go shopping, it would just be both of us just sitting in the, the very front of the store on those, like, lazy boy chairs, and then I guess maybe nothing happens in both scenarios. So I don't know. Anyway. Um, I'm essentially a beggar. <laughs> you trust me. If you're big as shit, most definitely not a beggar. And by the way, if you're spending all your money on food and then all your money that was in your bank that went to that food is now you, you are upset because you can't buy clothes with that money. I mean, come on now. What are we talking about right here? And I'm sick and I feel sick and I am sick and I feel sick, but I am moving on regardless. I can't wait for today to be over. <laughs> Ah, uh, uh, and my only co-worker was like, oh my god, I'm so skinny. And it's like, okay, die. Hashtag, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. Or car, sorry, car. I don't car. I'd be less sick of my body if it could at least fucking adjourn it properly. But I'll fuck off. Blah. I don't, I don't <laughs> French at the end there. <laughs> This person is obviously just feeling some type of way. I hope this is not an adult. Maybe like some 14-year-old wrote this or something like that, dude. Because none of this even made any sense at all. 
So if you were an adult and you wrote this, you should feel bad because it took me a long time to even understand what the fuck you were saying. Half the words that you said, not half the words. I'll, I'll be, I'll be honest here. One tenth of the words didn't even make sense. And I hate it. I hate it so much when people text like this. Like, can't you just text like an adult? I don't even use emojis. Okay, that's how much of an adult I am. I'm not saying that you're not an adult. Maybe this is just a me thing. I don't even know how to text in general. Like, if you ever, listen, if you ever get a text message from me and you go, wow, that text message was very elaborate and that was, it was very thought out message. The reason why, okay, is because I'm using the Gboard, all right? It's an app that you can download on Androids because I don't buy iPhones and you can, you can talk into it, you know, like you could do text to speech or speech to text. And I just talk into my phone because I'm very bad at typing, but I'm super good at like putting sentences together. So that's the reason why usually if you ever text me and you get like a very elaborate text message back, that's the reason why. Um, I also, one time I'm going to brag for a second here. I remember one time this girl was like, Oh, I can't do this assignment right now. Hey, David, don't you know about like the Civil War? Don't you know about the like the the Confederates and the North and the South and all this other stuff? And I was like, yeah, there was probably like a, a year stretch during COVID where I was doing a ton of research on ancient Rome and the uh, the Civil War, and I did a ton of research on it. So I'm like super well versed in it. And she was like, can you write this for me? And I was like, ah, I mean, sure, I can write it for you. And I just did that. I spent probably, I, I probably wrote the entire assignment, which is probably three pages worth of quality, great information. And I did it in a total of 30 minutes. Isn't that amazing? And because I already knew all the information off the top of my head. Like they were asking questions and I just fucking knew what to say. Dude, I'm so smart when it comes to things that I know I'm smart about. And I know how to put conversations together, so. Um, but I got her a 90, I think, or like an 89 or something like that. But like, think about this, right? I don't, I've never been to college. Like I don't go to, I've never been to college in the sense of like, I've never enrolled in a college. I don't take, I, I sucked at school. I really, I really genuinely sucked at school. I failed every class, not even joking. They just pushed me along. And, um, I feel like the reason was, is because I just didn't like it. It was just terrible, but I'm like, I know I'm not dumb. Like I know that I'm smart. I just, I just didn't have the aptitude to like put myself in a position where this was justified like it was so annoying to be sitting down for like however long school days were and have to like sit there and work on this stuff that I didn't want to work on but if it's something that I know that it's like cool and I'm interested about I can easily do it no problem but um 89 or 90 percent civil war stuff yes I wish I could be skinny and tall but it's literally not possible for my body type I think these people set themselves up for failure. Like, it's like that one girl that said that she was trying to be like, I don't know, a cheerleader or something like that. Like, have a perfectly petite body frame and all this other stuff. And then I always think, why would you think that you could... It's like somebody that's trans. Like, if you're, uh, if you're like a really, really busky, big, tall, ginormous fucking Goliath of a man. And then you transition to a woman. And you go, I'm going to be the prettiest, beautifulest, most amazing feminine woman ever. And I go, you know, I'm looking at you and I'm going, bro, you got a five o'clock shadow. You know, you, your nuts is hanging down. You got big ass dick swinging and shit, pendulum style. Sometimes I think that these people are just setting themselves up for failure. Like you can most definitely achieve a lot if you know that you can. Like, but put it within the, don't set yourself up for failure. Like understand what your limitations are and work based off of those things instead of looking at some unrealistic standard and going, this is what I'm going to do. No, you're not. <laughs> you're, you're just not, dude. You know what I'm talking about? That'd be like me saying that I got a small dick. It's obviously never going to happen. It's impossible. It's a fallacy to say that my penis isn't big. But anyway, I want, I want to wear all these cool clothes, but they aren't made to be flattering for my body. So just lose weight. Even though you think that you can't be skinny or whatever, um, you could be smaller, you could be skinnier, you could be healthier, you can be a lot of other things that with the ER at the end of it. And that would, those clothes might be flattering for you, or at least they'd be more flattering for your body than they would be at whatever size you're at right now. Anyway, we have got to get more fat people in fashion and art and get rid of these skinny people. So I won't be self-conscious anymore. First of all, this sounds like a you problem. You can't just say, hey, we need more people in these particular industries because I feel bad a lot about the way I feel. Again, it sounds like a you problem. It's not exactly a, you know, why do we need more people in this industry because you're fat? That'd be like me going, yo, we need more mustached men in Marvel movies because 
I'm just sick of watching movies with not enough mustached men. We need more, more mustached men and double it. Whatever, whatever metric that you think that we need, double it, okay? Easily. I don't care. That's what we need because I feel bad that we don't have enough mustached men in Marvel movies. I have been working on this shit for years because my happiness and health should come before my weight. Um, hmm. Happiness and health. Usually, happiness, health, and weight are synonymous. Usually, if you affect this, these two things will also be affected in a positive way. So, with that information being said, why don't you just uh, lose some of this and then get that? Ooh, yeah, dude. You're going to get so much more of this and so much more of this. If this goes down, oh, it's going to be so good, too. All in your mouth, all over your lower back or wherever this is. You're going to feel so much better all over your face, all over my lower back. Oh, it's going to feel fucking good. Hashtag fat phobe DNI. I block on <laughs> Hashtag I block on site. Don't say anything mean to me because I'm going to block you instantly. Beautiful person. Beautifully tolerant person. Did you know you can draw fat people in poses other than sitting down and standing like a tree? More at seven. What is seven? Is that like a movie or something like that? Okay. Well, I mean, this person's obviously having a bad time. I do know that fat people can do more than that. But usually, I mean, that's really where you see the fat people, dude. I mean, they're not really doing much. You think they're dancing, dude? You think they're doing aerobic activities? Nah, dude. They're struggling to get up out of that seated position. Anyway, hashtag have more move. Move their arms around. Move their legs. Throw in some funky dance poses. Show them freaky and sensitive styles. Hashtag have them do a car. First of all, dude, how fat are these fucking people? I don't know about cartwheels. I think most adults can even do cartwheels, let alone a person that's like 100 or 200 pounds over the weight that they should be. I don't know about that shit. That's kind of crazy. Have them bent in half and not comedically. What do you mean by com fucking cut in half? Com bent in half? It's crazy, okay? Draw fat people doing things, damn it. Why don't you do it? Like, if you, if you genuinely want... Fat people in particular uh, uh, outfits or styles or whatever the fuck. Why don't you like draw it yourself? Or hear me out. If you can't draw, which I know I don't. Um, if I draw, it looks like I like Michael J. Fox drew it, right? Have somebody else do it. Commission something. There are plenty of people out there on the internet that have amazing drawing skills or art skills or the, whatever you want to call those things. Those people can be drawn. They could draw whatever you want, right? You tell them, hey, dude, I want you to draw me two fat people sitting on a park bench. And one of them got their dick out. And the other one's chasing a squirrel behind him. And there's a woman. And she's in the park with a frying pan, dude. It's awesome. You know, like Darth Vader comes down. And he's sucking off a guy through his mask. Don't ask me how that's possible. Um, just, drew, just draw that. You know, just fucking draw that shit. Yeah, you can draw fat... Yeah, you can draw fat people, but can you draw fat people doing things instead of sitting there? Brought to you by, I'm sick of art dumps where the skinny characters have all the fun, dynamic poses, and then there's just fat person sitting on couch behind, <laughs> behind a table or whatever. I mean, it's pretty accurate, dude. I mean, that's a pretty accurate description of what usually happens when it comes to people that are fat. I mean, I don't know what to tell you, dude. If you're big as hell... Most of the time, it's going to be very difficult for you to do anything in general, especially when you're around other skinny people that are skinnier and they're going to be able to do more than you. I know that I can most definitely do more than most fat people, dude. I can run, walk, jump. <laughs> dude, I can do a lot, okay? And I remember I'm, I'm friends with a fat person, dude, and he can't do much compared to me. No, that's not my goofy impression. That's like a fat guy impression. Or I don't know exactly. It's like my congestion voice. Like, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. I really want that. That tastes so good. Oh, yeah. I was like, I don't know, man. You got a problem with it? Anyway. Ooh, woo. Chumbly? Thick thighs? People who think a bit of stomach pudge counts as fat when a real fat girl lover comes at them. What? The fuck does that even mean? What do you guys think about my ooh woo though? Ooh woo, ooh woo, or I guess you do it in a deeper voice. Ooh woo, much better, right? D hashtag deeply annoyed by some of y'all. Hashtag fat bitches. Hashtag fat bitches. It's just something funny about fat bitches, dude. I don't know. Fat bitches, and then you draw the skinniest girls I've ever seen. Hashtag oh fat bitches. You mean the bitches that have internal org organs? 
Um, laugh my ass off. Uh. Hashtag don't be a pussy. Draw actual fat people or die. Hashtag cheeseburger. True. Hashtag cheeseburger. Let's represent for the cheeseburger gang. Everybody in the comment section. Cheeseburgers, okay? That's the word of the day today. Cheeseburgers. Or just a cheeseburger emoji because I love burgers. They're super amazing special creatures upon the planet. And so are you. You're a super amazing special creature. <sighs> anyway, guys. We're getting the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously. They help me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do that stuff, I would appreciate that. If you want to become a member, you can do that by hitting subscribe. And then the join button should come up. If that's not what you want to do, that's fine. If you are a member, I want to thank you. Thank you so much for being a member. I love you. I love you. I love you. The same thing can be said for people that subscribe. Thank you so much for subscribing. You are also an amazing I love you person. If you watch the video's entirety, leave it down below by typing in cheeseburger. Tell me what you think about cheeseburgers also. I love them. I think they're fantastic, beautiful creatures, creations. Whoever made that is an artist, truly an artist. I mean, there's very few foods that you can fuck up like cheeseburgers, you know? Like if you're going to a restaurant and you order a cheeseburger, you can almost be guaranteed that's not going to be fucked up because I don't even know how you would fuck it up unless, like, the guy that made it was Indian and then he, like, put it underneath his armpit and started doing one of these, you know what I'm talking about? And then he gave you the cheeseburger like that. Then there you go. It's probably not good, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, there's very few times that you can fuck up a cheeseburger. It's like pizza. You can't fuck up pizza. Pizza is always going to be good. Same thing with, like, I would say mozzarella sticks and french fries. How do you fuck them up? You can't. But if you do, you must be really bad at your culinary skills, but... Anyway, I know you're not bad at your culinary skills because you're on your endeavor of losing weight or becoming fitter or becoming more muscular. You've invested time and energy into trying to disclose information about how to make things taste better. And your culinary skills have improved as a result of that. Your seasoning techniques, the way that you flick the wrist, the way that you marinate the particular foods and the internal organs that are inside of you have really juiced up my lifestyle in ways that I can't even possibly comprehend. So thank you so much for being such a delectable human being and finding out how to season your food and not eating just basic bitch shit. So that's amazing. Good job on that one, by the way. And also good job on taking care of yourself. I want to give you a high five right now. Can we do it? Ready? Did you get it? Did you get the high five? That's a high five for you because you deserve more than just a high five. But that's all I can give you, alas, right now. So I hope you appreciate that five, high five. And I appreciate you. If you watch the video in its entirety and uh, you want to check out my social media, you can by clicking on the links in the description of this video and the linking of it in my about section on my channel. There you can find my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, and second channel where you can join up on any of them. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.